they said we are we are live Sunday it's Sunday it's Friday morning it's funny eh? I come to church on a Friday gee but it feels like Sunday isn't it it feels right as a Sunday and it's a good day it's a, it's one of those special very special days and I'm grateful for you that's here all our visitors that's here uh, feel free this is the house of the Lord it doesn't belong to me or my wife or the leadership or everybody anybody else here this is the house of the Lord and to our guests on uh, Facebook live also welcome this morning everywhere in the world there's celebration going on this morning well even I think <clears throat> I think it started last night in Russia we are five hours there are five hours ahead of us so uh, when I sent all my Russian friends, when I sent them a, a Merry Christmas, I think they were already in Christmas. And to, to the Pakistani pastors, I think they were, they were celebrating Christmas from January all, all along. <laughs> it looks like it's everyday Christmas with them. Pastor Stephen Puran from Prakhi, Pakistan. And uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it this morning. Uh, cross generation, no, no. We, we are studying for cross generation church, ladies and gentlemen, isn't it? Yes. But we established, we planted the church. CGC, Pakistan. Amen. Next year, Rana and myself, we will visit and uh, do all the necessary stuff. Um, I see we've got evangelists in the house and, uh, and Monique. Matt, welcome. Monique, uh, Monique, welcome. I'm glad that you are also here with us this morning. Many of our people are on holiday. Praise God for holidays. I, I hope they're not at the sea, at the beach, because it's closed. <laughs> so I don't know where they find themselves, in the malls. The malls are open. Instead, the malls should be closed and the beach is open. It's crazy stuff. My wife is just pointing at me. I'm busy mocking something. <laughs> Praise God for, for, for humanity. It's the strangest thing that God ever could create is man. Isn't it? I've never seen something so full of nonsense. Do you agree with me? Matt, are you, are you, do you agree with me? You've seen these things in ministry now. Man is just a complicated being. Gee, God, don't you want to create us all over and put, take something out and put something else in? Uh, you are so individually specially made. Yes. Can you imagine there must be another one like me? Wow, what a smash. I'm full of nonsense. Can you imagine my wife sits with two of me? Neta, don't you, don't you do that. I'm watching you. <laughs> yeah. uh, but this morning, I'm glad that we are here. You know what? This is, all over the world, it's celebrated Christmas. Everyone. But I'm telling you, if you are really born again, every day is Christmas. Every day is a celebration. Every day of our lives is a celebration. We celebrate Jesus every day. And that makes it so much, can I say, a place of intimate. Being intimate with Him is just an amazing place. But Father, you know, this morning we've come as a, as a church and we want to glorify You for your, your magnificent plan that could never be duplicated by nobody. No one ever thought of this except you you had it planned out before the foundations of the earth you had it perfectly set out separ separated set apart for a time like this that that your creatures that you've created will come and worship a very amazing day and although it might not be and it is not we understand the day of the birth we are just graciously glad 
that Jesus was born so that we can be reunited, rejoined with you, Father, as that what Adam was being reinstated. And I want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for everyone that's watching, everyone that's here, and may this day be truly a Merry Christmas, a blessed day in everyone's life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to start this morning totally from a different place. As you know me by now, I like to start all over from different places. Because uh, I think, uh, can you imagine everyone preach the same message this morning? And I'm telling you, if you can put it together, it will be most probably the same thing. Just different words. You will just see the character of the people inside of the messages. But this morning, I want to start, I want to begin with the scripture in Matthew 1, verse 18 to 25. I just want to take it somewhere else. Matthew, 18, Matthew 1, verse 18 to 25 from the Amplified. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place under these circumstances. When his mother Mary had been promised in marriage to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the promised husband Joseph, being a just and upright man, and not willing to expose her publicly and to shame and disgrace her, decided to, repu uh, to repudiate and dismiss, to divorce her quietly and secretly. But as he was thinking this over, behold, an angel. And I, I, I wish that when we start thinking of stuff, that God will send an angel and, and say, listen, this is not good. Nobody say amen to that. Because we can make some crazy decisions. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of, from out of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus. The Greek form of the Hebrew Joshua, which means Savior, for he will save the world from their sins, that is, prevent them from failing and missing the true end and scope of life, which is God. All this took place that it might be fulfilled, which the Lord has spoken through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which when translated means God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from the east sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took her to his side as his wife. But he had no union with her as her husband until she had born a firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. What a name, the name of Jesus. I'm grateful for the name of Jesus. If it was not for Jesus, we would not have been here. If it wasn't for Jesus, none of us would have been here. Christmas was always, always was Christmas. It was such an exciting time for me in my grown up years. It was such a, a place of um, going to town, buying presents, wrap the presents, the shopping things, buying food, the, the food that's available, the tree, the decorating the tree, I put all, all these decorations on the tree and the lights. It was such a beautiful thing and um, I actually miss it. It, but it was such a beautiful thing and the preparations I remember my parents they used to like a week before Christmas they, they start doing all these preparations and it was like wow there's a celebration coming there's something coming that is going to be so great 
And every time that you walk into the lounge, you will see the, the tree, and you will see at, at night, you will see the lights flickering, and, and as the presence starts growing under the tree, the excitement grows. Can you, is it with you too? Is it the same thing? It's like, the, oh, the presents are growing, and, and, and when you are small, you, you just want to have a peep there. You just want to, and, and your father said, no, 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 not now, not now. You cannot look now. Wait. And when they are not there, you go, no, just have a look, which is yours. <laughs> I, well, I did it. Someone said, if, if, if you are laughing, you did the same. <laughs> so, uh, well, we did that. What a joyful time it was. It was such a beautiful time. But I, I want you to notice something. I, I'm speaking kind of past tense. Calling it was. Was. And you know why I said was? Because it, it kind of died a death. And this death is, it was because of no purposeful celebrations. What do you mean? In those years, we did it for the wrong purpose. In those years, what I remember, we did it for the wrong purpose, but the church was on, on, on Christmas Day full. Now I'm just asking the question, if the church is now on Christmas Day empty, are the people at home doing it for the right purpose? Or are they still doing it for the wrong purpose? Just ask. The whole thing about that celebration in those days was because of the wrong reason. We celebrated the wrong thing. It was never taught. It was all about the presents, the tree, the decorations. Cannot wait to open the presents, that kind of stuff. It was all about that. It's like in the Pentecostals. They started to build a resistance against this event. And when you become a, a preacher, you're getting bombarded with many questions. Is it the day of Jesus' birth? Is it not? Is it demonic? Is it not? Is it? Is it? Is it this? Is it that? Is it? And it's just kind of, wow. His birth raised such a place of discussion. People's opinions, disagreements, and kind of a fighting amongst Christians. Let me tell you the real story about this day. Let me tell you what it means. Let me, and it's just, wow, come on. Come on. The enemy has become the topic of the celebration. The attention moved from Jesus. It moved towards an enemy. Just because we are so indoctrinated by theological differences. And the fact that Google is available to everybody and, and people go and sit on Google and they Google all this stuff just to find a place of getting an argument about things. But I believe that when you speak to those people up front and ask them, okay, you tell me then, then they're confused because they only know the bad side of it. My, my, my whole question is, does it matter when Jesus was born? No. It doesn't matter that he was born. It doesn't matter when he was born. It do matters that he was born. Yes. That matters to me. So when we are in the celebration, when we, we speak about Christmas, 
There's one thing you cannot ignore about Christmas, and that's the Holy Spirit. We've been speaking about the manger, we've been speaking about Joseph and Mary, we've been speaking about they couldn't get a housing place, they had to stay in the stall, and in a, Jesus was born in a manger. We spoke about the three wise men, and there's a contradiction about those things. Was the manger this side, was it this side? Was it this wide? Was it this wide? Was it in a, in a, in a, in a stall? Was it not in a stall? Was it... Do you hear what I'm saying? It's just a lot of contradictions all over the show. And the, the focus is taken away from Jesus. And there's beautiful sermons that came from all these things. Yes, it is. Amazing things. Kind of revelation things. Rather right myself, we spoke about what happened with the two stars, the two planets. And wow, what a, what a revelation thing this is. I said, no, no, we missed it this time, but we'll see, we'll look at it the next time. How many years, 80 years from now on? 80 years from now on. Maybe we will be there. And we can see it like this. And not from earth side, but from heaven side. Come on. Who cares if the manger was lined with hay or if there was a blanket in it? The focus was so much on the negative stuff about Jesus, about this event. And I want to tell you this. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no Christmas story. Can you imagine we must get a day that we celebrate the Holy Spirit? We've got a day that we celebrate the Holy Spirit. It's every day. The focus of the Christmas story is on Jesus. And I understand that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because without Jesus, there would be no Christmas story. But just think of this. Without the virgin birth, there would be no Messiah. And without the Holy Spirit, there would be no virgin birth. That's amazing. So for Jesus to be the Savior of humanity, He had to be the perfect sacrifice. You think, when I, when I look at these things, I'm getting very excited about about God, the plan. I know what I'm doing. For me, I really think that 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 the, the enemy had this mindset of I've got you now in a in a check. God I've got you in check now, what's your next move? Before the birth of Jesus, I've got you in check. What's the next move? God spoke in Malachi and he, sp he spoke to the end. And then for 400 years there was no voice. God was silent. God didn't speak for 400 years. Can you imagine in our day, God don't speak with people for a week long and they are backslidden. Can you imagine 400 years where you will find yourself in 400 years where God doesn't speak? An enemy thought, wow, I've got you now, I've got you cornered, I've got you checkmate. God said, no, you don't understand the game. Let me show you what the king can do. And God knew. I need to 
do something so miraculous that not even the devil thought about it. God knew that it was impossible for him to come to the earth without the body because it would make it illegal on the earth. If God came without the body to restore, it, it would have been illegally on the earth. So now he had to make a plan, getting it aligned, so that his appearance in the earth could be legal. Because the enemy also understand one thing, that he cannot be legal on the earth if he doesn't have a body. That's why the enemy always looking for a host that he can live in. Because then it makes him illegally legal. So God knew I had to do this incarnation, connect myself into this body, into this baby that's perfect, that will make me legal on the earth. You get what I'm saying? So for Jesus, for Jesus to be the savior of humanity, he had to be the perfect sacrifice, the perfect lamb. We understand that. The lamb without spot and blemish. The lamb that was slain and whose blood was put on the doorpost. That lamb. Perfect. Perfect. And he had to be that perfect person, that perfect sacrifice, so that he could die for one and all in this earth. So that the reconciliation can take place with us, that is not God's people, that are heathens, so that we can be reconciled to the Father. Father God is focused, focused on us. Jesus, the fact that Jesus was born, was God had you and me in mind. So for this hap to happen, this reconciliation, this restoration, this, this restoring of what was lost, for this to happen, Jesus had to be fully man. He had to be fully human. He was God, but He was fully man. He laid down all His glory. He laid down who He was. I think the perspective of him in the manger, in the store, is just a place of a, 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 a humble picture. So that why we can relate. Can you imagine God make it so simple so that we as human beings can relate? Because all of us started there in a, in a manger, in a crook. We understand the process of being birthed in a crook. Lying there in your cot. And the baby getting raised from there into the greatness. The only thing is that baby was without sin. That baby was not born like you and me. In sin. Jesus had to come as one of us. The Jews, they were waiting for this powerful king. This man that will come and be the government. Because they understood Isaiah 9 verse 6 wrong. And the government will rest on his... They thought that they're going to have somebody that's going to walk up there and say, I am the Messiah, the king of the Jews. They've never expected a humble baby. 
They've never expected a humble baby. He had to come so that we can relate. He had to come for us as a human being to die for us. But he had to be perfect. He took on a human body so that our bodies can be saved. He took on a human mind to save our minds. Without becoming man in his emotions, he could not have rescued our hearts. And without taking a human will, he could not save our broken and wandering worlds. Was all of these things in him? Yes, it was. It was. Jesus grew. According to Luke, he grew up in favor with God and man. He laid down everything. When God incarnated there into that baby Jesus, it was, can you imagine the Christ? Laid down everything for us so that we can relate In the words of Gregory of Nazanius, that which he has not assumed, he has not healed. He became a man in full, so that he might save us all. In full. He had to be without the inherited sin of Adam. So Jesus had to be born without the contribution of man. He had to be born without the stain of sin. That sin that we bear from birth. The angel told Joseph in a dream, he said to him, That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was the agent of the conception. He was the power of life. That resulted in the pregnancy. He that made Mary pregnant was Holy Spirit. He overshadowed her. When Gabriel appeared to Mary in, in the book of Luke, he, he, he told her that she would give birth to the Savior of the world. We read these things. But when we start pondering upon the thoughts of this and start thinking of, of what, what's happening here, here's this, this lady, young, a young woman, a virgin, never been with a man. Gee, in our day you don't get that anymore, do we? We have, to, we have to decide when he's young. Here, here she is, a virgin. And God picked her. He picked her of all the, the Jewish girls. He picked her. And the, and, the Holy Spirit, and, the, and the angel appeared to her. Gee, the angel appeared to her. I, I want you to see it. And he said to you, are going to be pregnant with the Savior. I don't think so. You're going to be pregnant with the Savior. I will prove. No. What if it happens to you and to me? Now we want proof. Show me. We want to see it first. No. She just said to him, how is it possible? How can it be? Because I've never been with a man. I, I'm, 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 not even with my fiancé. 
I've never been there. And the angel said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, the only one who is to be born will be called Son of God. You're going to be pregnant with the Son of God. Although Christ was born of Mary, He was a child of the Holy Spirit. I want you just to see what I'm saying. If it was not for the Holy Spirit, he would not, Jesus would not have been there. The birth of Christ was directly of the Holy Spirit. His source was the Holy Spirit and His element was divine. Through the Virgin Mary, He put on flesh and blood the human nature. You, you know that. You, you know that. The blood of the baby and the blood of the mother don't mix. You understand that? When a mother is pregnant with a baby, their blood doesn't mix. Ladies, do you, do you know that? Yes. You don't, you don't know that. It's a revelation. If the blood mixed, then it wouldn't, with that, then it wouldn't be God. So through this, this, this Jewish, young Jewish woman, he put on flesh and he put on blood. He put on a human nature, the likeness of the flesh, the likeness of men. Through so Jesus was born as a child with flesh and blood. His source was the Holy Spirit. Although he looked like he was perfect. You know what's amazing? What's amazing about him there in the manger, the fact that the king, I thought, I, I, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say this. Somewhere there was heard that there was a new king born. And these wise men, three wise men, it is said that they are kings from the east. And kingly protocol says, if there, a king is born, kings have to visit him and present him with the, a king's gift. For a reason. So these three wise men, these three kings, people say they're astrologers, but one Bible says astrologers, oh, a lot of stuff. And that when they came to Jesus, they saw this king. And they, they made homage to him. They bowed before him and they worshipped him. And they gave him the best gift that they had. Why? Because in kingly protocol it says, when a king approaches another king, he, he wants to outgive that king to show that he's a greater king. That's what they did with Jesus. And that's when we are giving in, in the body of Christ as kings of, he's the king of kings. So when we give, we try to outgive. We don't get that. God the Father has given His only begotten Son as a gift of life to humanity. He was the gift. Jesus is the gift. Can I tell you something about that gift? The gift called Jesus. He's wrapped. The way you wrap that present under the tree, he's wrapped. What do you mean he's wrapped? I'm saying he's wrapped. That's why the whole world is celebrating Jesus. 
but they celebrating Jesus wrapped. You and me have to unwrap him because he's wrapped in revelation. If you want to understand the, the, the essence, the fullness of that gift, you have to unwrap him. You have to unwrap him. He's the word made flesh. The same way you unwrap the Bible, the word, you have to unwrap him to understand who he is. And he's the savior of the world. Me and my brother, we had a great discussion the other day. That Jesus died for all? Yes. Does everybody belong to him? No. But how is it that he died for all? He died for all. Maybe it's full of that another day. But the agency by which the birth took place was through the power of the Holy Spirit upon a humble young Jewish woman who was willing to say yes to the plan of God for her life. The angel just, he, he didn't come and he, 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 God didn't come and he forced himself onto her. If Mary said no, then Jesus would have been born from somebody else. But she said yes. She said yes. That same Holy Spirit that overshadowed Mary can still give birth to miracles in us and through us. Can I tell you something about the Holy Spirit? He wants to overshadow you so much. He wants to impregnate you with a God miracle. And He comes to us. The same way that he impregnated Mary, overshadowing her by her words. Yes, let it be according to your plan. The same way he's coming to us. See, because flesh cannot accomplish the things of the kingdom of God. Only the Spirit of God can. The anointing of the Holy Spirit upon human flesh can accomplish great things in the kingdom. See, apart from the work of the Holy Spirit in her life, Mary was just this Jewish woman and she was engaged. She had plans. She planned and purposed for a life with a man, Joseph, getting, coming into marriage with him, Raising children in a house and just have a great, awesome life. And God came and He confused their life a little bit. He arranged the life. He threw away and upside down all their plans. Joseph, your wife's going to be, your, your fiance is going to be pregnant. <gasps> what are you saying? My father in law is going to kill me. The people are going to stone us. And nowadays, quick, go for it. I just imagine him coming to her and saying to her, You're going to be a mother. You're going to bore birth the Savior but, but uh, 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 what about him 
It's my fiance. What about him? Did you speak to him? Did you tell him that? But it was her availability. It was her availability towards God's plan. She was available to God's plan upon her life. And that miracle gave birth to the greatest miracle the world has ever known. This, is, this celebration of this day that we celebrate is the greatest miracle ever. You will never ever I think the next miracle that is as great maybe a little bit less but as great is the fact that he who came in an in a, in a image of a baby grew up died and saved a rich like me that is a miracle that's a miracle. You have to know this. God is not looking for superstars to accomplish His will. When that little baby was there, birthed from, from flesh, overshadowed by spirit, God at you and me in mind. For many, the celebration of the 25th of December ends at sundown. Then still the end. <coughs> Christmas is over. For, for those that's in party mood, Christmas is maybe tomorrow morning with a headache. But the 25th is over, it's done, we've done, it. it's, it's okay, thanks. The presents are open, the bottles are empty, and some woman walks around with blue eyes. And it's done. I'm telling you, it's not done. It's not done. God is looking for ordinary people who will say yes, yes to His plan. I see that picture, I see that place of Jesus there in a, in a, in a manger. And I, and I bring that into a revelational picture, into my own understanding. And I can see that, that amazing miracle that God wants to birth through me. I'm just Mary. I'm just another form of a Mary that said, Yes, Lord, birth your plan through me. He's just looking for ordinary people who will say yes to his plan and his purposes for their lives and who will allow him to anoint them with his spirit to do his will and to do his work and it's described for us in Philippians 2 verse 13 not in your own strength for it's God who is all the while effectively at work in you energizing and creating in you the power and the desire he he gave that little baby so that the same effect can happen in us so that we also will come with the perfect example of him who grew up in favor with God and man and showed us exactly what it is to be intimate with the Father, that showed us exactly what it is to walk around and forgive, to, sh to show exactly what it is to live the lifestyle in a human form in this earth with the desires of our hearts and our minds to be Him 
and our eyes to be set on the things that's above and not beneath. If it wasn't for Him, you and I would not have the picture of doing that. Our measurement is not the Godhead. Our measurement for doing that what we do is the fact that Jesus was a human man. Perfectly human. But his eyes, his life was focused on God all the time, on the Father. It is time, it's been time for years, it has been time for decades for some of us, or just ordinary people, that we will begin to yield to the Spirit, really yield to the Spirit, and walk in the Spirit, and allow the Spirit to give us, so that through the gifts, and His availability, His being in us, start bearing fruit in this earth. The fact that you are born again, the fact that I'm born again, take it back there. See it there. The fact that you are sitting here this morning is because of the impregnation that happened when the Holy Spirit overshadowed you the day when you said, Yes, Lord, I will serve you. That day, something happened that is a miracle like miracle never seen. We love to see the, the, the death here. And we love to see the, the, the backs straighten. We love to see the crumpled walk. I'm telling you that's amazing stuff. But that day when the Holy Spirit came and He came upon you. And He never forced Him on you. He never took you by the throat and said, accept me. No. He came and He overshadowed you in the beauty of His presence. And that moment was that special place of birth. And He birthed you. And now you find yourself in a group. And you start growing up in the church and you grow in the church for His good pleasure. A Pentecostal Christmas is a Christmas where the church says yes to God's plan, yes to the anointing, yes to the purpose, yes to the destiny, Yes, to be sons and daughters of Him. This Christmas, like every other Christmas, year in, year out, it's one of those days that, that we need to say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, I'm yielding. Anoint, anoint me, appoint me. And that you are. But sometimes you just need to say it again to get that place of activate again. I yield unto thine will, thy plan, thy purpose for my life. See, some people are, are attracted to Christmas the same way that they are attracted to parties and fun and games. 
and larger popular events. Everyone at the rugby game seems to have great fun. The atmosphere and the excitement is just so contagious. Everybody's yelling and screaming and having a good time and, and that welcome relief from screaming and shouting from the grinding of every day's life. They do things in this time and they allow things in this time that they would normally not do. They join in a celebration that they don't even understand. You can ask anybody in any human being in this day, what is this day? And they will tell you it's Christmas. Okay, what it is? What is Christmas? This is the day that Jesus is born. And to them it's a so what? This is just a rehearsal. We just rehearse again what we did last year this time and we rehearse it again so that we can do it next year this time also. Until the understanding comes that say, God, you had me in your thoughts. He had you in, the, in his thoughts when he planned this miracle event so that you can follow his perfect plan. Yes. I don't care who celebrates Christmas today. I don't care who argue about this day. I don't care about the differences, the opinions, the, 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 the contradictions that reign in this day. I'm just the one thing that if he didn't, if he wasn't born, I would have a lot of trouble. I would be in a tight spot. But I can look at him at the age of 12 standing in the synagogue and teaching the Pharisees and the Sadducees things that they should have known. A baby that came and when your baby is, is, is born and you stand here in, up front, here in the front and you dedicate that baby, you say to the baby, that's what you do. It's yours, God. It's yours. You gave me this miracle. Now I present this miracle unto you in gratefulness, in thankfulness. I will raise him in the fear of the Lord. Thirty years later, that baby comes into the church. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit, for overshadowing me like you overshadowed me. When I think of that. He had no mind with the picture of the birth. He had no mind. He had you in mind. His thoughts, nothing selfish. Nothing selfish. But we want to argue a manger. We want to argue this day. We want to argue and form opinions over stuff and miss what it's all about.
He was in the womb of his mother. And when Mary visited Elizabeth, and being pregnant, Elizabeth, with John the Baptist. When, they, when Mary walked into that room, the Bible says that the baby in Elizabeth leaped. I want to say to you, I, I'm leaping, and I hope I make you leap with what you are carrying. There's a world out there. There's a people out there that receives this day as a public holiday. And that's that. There's a people out there that needs to understand that this message is that God is thinking and have them in thought. Doesn't matter what culture, doesn't matter what nation, doesn't matter what language, it doesn't matter what faith. God made this day happen for all. And He gave us the King of Kings so that we can have a resemblance and understanding of how to do this life. And to introduce others to Him so that they can have the same life. And He will appear unto them through you. He will manifest him through you unto them with a message of good news, a message of hope. And you will present a message that leaves that person with an answer. It's either yes or no. And when they say yes, he will come and overshadow them. And He will impregnate them with Him. This is a message. This is a, the Christmas message. Somebody out there needs this. So that they can get impregnated with Him. So that they can be born. The day when you, when he came and he impregnated you, if you were 50 years old at the time in the physical, and it was two years ago, guess where are you, where you are? Two years old. What a, what a God we serve. What a God we serve. Yeah. That enemy thought he had God in a checkmate. And God said to him, no, you don't understand. You, you missed the move of the king. Because the king can move in any area. One step at a time. But you try to, to get me into a corner with your bishop. You try to get me in a corner with your castle or your knight. Let me show you what the king can do. And that night a king was born. And the three that worshipped him at first. Three kings. spoke on the third day. I'm not going to go there now. It's not for now. 
on the third day, he will rise and we will be risen with him. But you have to say yes. You know, and we need to say yes. And, and a, a terrible thing for me, this is a sad thing for me, is that we, can, that we come every time and we come and say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Yes, I understand. I understand. It's a continuous thing. But He always shouted you once. He always shouted me once. It's time for us to wake up and to embrace what He's done. Embrace that. Grab that with your every thing and say, Lord, I said yes 20 years ago and I, my yes was actually no. Forgive me for that yes then and not doing that yes till now. But now I'm coming and I say, yes, Lord, yes. From this moment on. And only you can make it work for you. If you don't make it work for you, if you don't make the impregnation work for you, if you don't make the overshadowing work for you, if you don't make that celebration of that overshadowing work for you, then this is just another day. Then this is just another beautiful public holiday that's going to be a public holiday for the next, till Jesus comes, till He comes. For me to yes, yes Lord, yes. I said yes 20 years ago and I still yes. Yes Lord, yes. Fulfill your plan in my life. Amen. 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 What a day. What a day. What a day this is. There's people out there, brother and sister, This morning they cannot even walk. They cannot even talk. This morning there's people out there that had a celebration last night that's of the world. There's marriages that's on the rocks. There's divorces going to be assigned. There's children that's been orphaned. There's deaths. There's people backsliding. And many of these people are people that said yes to Jesus years ago. But it was just too difficult to be erased. So I want to invite you this morning and say to you, when you say yes, let your yes be meaningful. Mean it. Because the moment you mean it, He still has much to overshadow you with. He will overshadow you. Because He had you in mind with this picture of Jesus. Of this whole process. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We stand with me.